Good morning, Restore Community family. In a way, I say, Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Eve. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. My name is Dustin Pruitt. This is my favorite time of the year. I am so excited to be here. I've been wearing Christmas jumpers since November 23rd, which was Thanksgiving back in America. I, I'm upset at the very beginning of this month, the first Sunday of this month, Ian wasn't wearing a Christmas jumper. How dare you, sir? It is December. You should be feeling the Christmas spirit. But but that's me taking my grievances out here. You don't need to hear that. Maybe that's just for him uh, uh, behind the camera uh, to have a nice little laugh. But I'm so excited to be here with you. Christmas Eve, my favorite time of year. This is, it's such a beautiful time. There's not a, I don't think there's an aspect of the Christmas season that I don't love. Like, I hate the cold, but during Christmas, I love it. It's magical. It's special. Talk to me in January, February. I'm going to whine like nobody's ever whined before. But now, I love it. The music, I love Christmas music. I love all those old songs. Now, I might want to get you to sing a carol with me here in a little bit, but, but I'm not a singer myself, but I love the songs. I love the spirit of it, of giving of gifts, let there be peace on earth, goodwill between all mankind. I love it. It's so great. And it starts kind of back in Thanksgiving. For I'm an American, so me, people think America is like, oh, you're celebrating the founding of America, the colonies, breaking bread with the Native American people. It, it maybe started as that, but it's not that. It's a family holiday now. That the family, whether you were born into it or you're you were thrown into it, you come together and you break bread and you just have a meal with each other. Everyone around the table. It's probably a grandparent's favorite holiday because you have your whole family back around your table. And I just that whole mentality of love is just crammed into the season and I love it. And it makes me think of uh, me and my wife. We, we, we don't have any kids yet, but we'd like to soon. And we always think about like, oh, the first Christmas we had together. Or maybe the first Christmas we'll have when we have kids. What will that be like? And we talk about it and somewhat romanticize it. And it makes me think of just my wife in general. How much I love my wife. I, can I say I love my wife? Am I just allowed to have a moment here as a guy married to a girl? I love my wife. Her name's Elise, for whoever hasn't met her. She's so special, she's great. She's so smart and funny and beautiful and so creative. It just blows, I'm not a, I don't think I'm an artistically creative person. She's, she's so great. And, and it reminds me of this book that I read and maybe a ton of other people have read this book. It's The Five Love Languages. And I think of the way that we, we love one another and how I love my wife. And, and these five love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and the giving and receiving of gifts. Now, to, to break that down for some people, like words of affirmation, you might feel very loved when somebody says that you're special and that I love you and that you're so good at that, you're so smart. Or maybe you, you like doing that. You like building people up with words of affirmation. Or maybe you, need, you feel like you need something stronger. Or words of affirmation aren't enough. So you need somebody to do an act of service. Of making you dinner. Or cleaning up the flat. Or whatever it may be. And I think about my wife. And how I love my wife. And how there's not a mess too big. There's not a dish that's too crusty. <laughs> There's not a, 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 we have a dog. There's not a, a, a dog mess in, in the back garden that I won't pick up with, with a plastic bag. Uh, no matter the smell, no matter anything about it. There's nothing that I wouldn't do for my wife. No words I wouldn't say, no, no length I wouldn't go to, no acts of service, no gift I wouldn't give her. Because I love my wife. No amount of time. I love my wife. 
and Christmas is such a great time to show that. Starting with Thanksgiving, we, we typically in America, we go around the table and we say, what are we thankful for? These words of affirmation of how we're thankful for one another and where we've been in that year through tough times and kind of culminating, culminating in Christmas Day where we give gifts, the showing of that love. And us, maybe you're not a Christian watching here today, but as Christians, we celebrate Christmas for the Christ. For Jesus was born, not on December 25th, we, well, I think we all know that, and hopefully we can all agree on that, but this is the day we chose to celebrate, the birth of Jesus. And it makes me think of God. What was God thinking? God was up on his throne in heaven, surrounded by angels. They're singing songs, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, and he's he sees us, his children here on earth, and his heart beats. And he sees the separation that sin has caused. And his heart doesn't like it. And he wants to show his love for his children. And so he gives a gift Never given before, never given since. In John 3.16, it says it quite succinctly. It said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What a gift! What a gift! It wasn't an easy gift, though. Sometimes it's easy. Oh, I got the perfect gift because I was walking by the stores on the shelf. I grabbed it. I didn't even have to break stride. And I walked to the register and I got it. But it was his only son. Knowing that to give Jesus would require great pain and suffering for them to ultimately die for our sin, the ultimate gift that was given, it wasn't easy. But he did it anyway. Because there wasn't any mess that we created that God wouldn't clean up. There weren't any words of affirmation that God was willing to withhold from us. No promise. There was nothing. The Bible goes on to say um, in Romans chapter 8, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. All that is wrapped up with a bow, almost, in Jesus. The ultimate gift, the ultimate sign of love. Now, we, we sing all these Christmas carols during this time. I personally like Deck the Halls. So we're, we're going to do a little back and forth here real quickly. I'm going to sing the part, and you're going to sing the part. You know what's coming, so warm up your pipes. Hmm. So, Deck the Halls with boughs of holly. Tis the season to be jolly. I really, really hope you're seeing that at home and I'm not just feeling like a, a, an idiot up here. But I love these songs because some of these, some of these carols, not this one specifically, but some of these carols speak about God and His love for us. And I think there's one song that I want to enter into the Christmas carol canon. Uh, it, it's not a song that I created. It's an older song. But uh, the chorus kind of goes like this. and. and you may uh, be remembered of this. It says, But I would walk 500 miles 
And I would walk 500 more just to be the man who walks a thousand miles to fall down at your door. Anyway, this is uh, the song is <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to be by the proclaimers and it just speaks of their love. There's nothing they wouldn't do. There's no trial. They wouldn't. I don't care how long I got. Do I got to walk 500 miles? Do it. I'll double it. I'll do it to show my love for you. It goes on to say that when I'm working, yes, I know I'm going to be. I'm working for you. Now, this is just talking about the between a man and a woman. So that much more for God. I think this fits so perfectly into the message of Christmas time of God's love for us. That God saw this great big mess of sin that separated us. And he said, fine, I'll cross it. I'll, I'll commit the ultimate sacrifice to close that gap, to clean up that mess. I'll do it. I'll give my only son to do it. Because nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So this Christmas season, which is also a, a time that is so lonely for many people, I... I'm going to say words that are going to seem really glib um, and short-sighted, but please don't feel alone. The God of the universe loves you. He sent Jesus to show you that. It's such an amazing gift that God loves us. He doesn't have to. That's the thing. God doesn't have to. He's fine up on His throne. He doesn't need us to exist. But His heart. Oh, it needs us. It loves us. It longs for us. And it drove Him to clean up our humongous mess of sin. What a gift, guys. What a gift. So in this Christmas season is Christmas Eve. I hope you take a time. I know it's in the morning. It's kind of weird to say Eve. But I hope you take some time to just meditate on God's love. Think of the things that maybe your parents did to show their love for you. Maybe the great gifts they gave you in Christmas's past. Oh my gosh, I got a, a Super Nintendo or Game Boy. I'm kind of speaking for myself. Oh my gosh, a Game Boy Color. I got the Pokemon game I wanted. Oh, Dad, is that a Nintendo? You can tell I was very video game focused as a child. Now I'm like, oh my gosh, those are great socks. Thanks. <laughs> but focus on the gifts that you've been given in the past. And then think on the love that the gift giver was showing and turn that corner into thinking about God and the gift he gave that he didn't have to, but he did joyfully, knowing that it was going to hurt, knowing that it was going to be hard but knowing it was going to be worth it for you, for me, for us. He loves us that much. Why don't I pray? God, we thank you so, 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 so much for that love. I wish I was as eloquent as the psalmist. I wish I was eloquent as the proclaimers even, saying how much that their love would drive them. But God, I can just say thank you. I can say hallelujah. And I can thank you for sending your only son to die for my sins, to clean up my mess that you would love me so much and so greatly. What an honor and what a privilege.
And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much for coming out, guys. Please don't don't turn away. Uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow, Christmas Day. We're going to have a little something new and fresh for you. We're going to have a, a face you might not have seen before uh, showing up here on this feed. And it's so worth it. It's going to be so, so good. So I look forward to seeing you Christmas Day. But uh, if we don't see you then, I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.